What's going on guys? Today is the day. The day to bolt up the suspension onto the CR250 and get this thing all wrapped up. We've got some tricked out forks here and a cool looking shock that we built in the previous video. Really pumped on how these came out and I'm more excited to get them bolted up. It's been a long time coming and make sure you stay tuned for the entire video. We do have a giveaway at some point. I apologize if I'm a little slow today. I had treatment yesterday, so I'm a little loopy, but either way, let's get after it. I'm just itching to see how the forks look on the bike, so I'm going to pop those on first. So I'm gonna start with the fork height about one or two millimeters above the triple clamp. Once you've got your fork height identical on either side, you can even go ahead and measure it with a set of calipers, which is something I should probably do. 777, 830, this one's gonna have to come down a little bit. All right, that is 7.8, so close enough right there. And what I was saying, once you have the fork height set, torque the triple clamp bolts. The top bolts are 16 foot pounds and the bottoms are 14. And then as you're torquing these, you wanna alternate from the top one to the bottom one, tighten them evenly. There's a click and there's a click. Man, that is looking ridiculously good, but the forks are kind of missing something right about here. I'll stick those on a little later. Now let's get this poor thing on. It's been over here in the corner collecting cobwebs. Let's get it back where it belongs. For now, I'm gonna leave the axle and pinch bolts loose. I'll need to get the rear shock on before I can properly align the forks and the wheel. So next up, let's get this caliper mounted up. So you wanna make sure the brake line is on the inside of the forks. The most common mistake I see is when people route the brake line on the outside. And the reason you don't wanna do this is if it catches uh, someone's foot peg or a tree branch, that'll rip your brake line right off. So make sure it's routed to the inside. Now, if your pads are too close together for the rotor to fit, you can use a little plastic lever like we're using earlier to pry those apart. Should slip on now. Hello. You wanna help me? All right, this will need some blue Loctite. I got a third hand here, Haley's here. Squirt a little blue Loctite on there. Perfect. It's actually nice having a third hand sometimes. You wanna be my apprentice? Sure. Okay. All right, quit your job and help me out. I'll pay you. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> oh, isn't that looking sick? It looks awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm pumped on it. Now the torque spec for the caliper mounting bolts is 22 foot pounds. Holy crap, that is something else. The only thing I didn't think about here when I was picking out colors is I use a different color on the caliper mount versus the fork lug. Should have gone with the same color, but honestly, not too big of a deal. Just nitpicking. All right, what do we got next? I guess that would be the shock. I ended up getting the bladder charged to 150 PSI with nitrogen and pressed in a new shock bearing as well. Now to get this bolted up, I'll need to pop off the seat and subframe real quick. Looking dandy. Now to get back to the front end with the wheel and fork alignment, we're gonna start off by torquing the axle nut to the spec and that is 65 foot-pounds. 
Now, if your axle won't tighten all the way to the spec like we have here, you'll need to tighten down the pinch bolts on the brake rotor side. The spec on these ones is 14 foot pounds. Now we can attack it with the bigger torque wrench and set it to the 65. Then we're gonna come over to this side and make sure the fork is free on the axle. Now there's two different ways to align the forks and the wheel. The first being to spin the wheel and then grab the brake like that. That'll bring the forks in proper alignment just naturally. And the other way to do that is by taking the bike off the stand and compressing the suspension. Now we're gonna compress the forks and this will also naturally align the forks and bring them into their place. Now we'll just need to torque the bolts on this side. It's the same spec as the left side. So it's super important to have your forks aligned. If they are misaligned, you'll actually cause wear on your lower tubes and your suspension won't be very smooth. It'll be hard to compress. One thing that's helpful is having an O-ring on the lower fork. That'll show you how much your suspension is compressing and that way you can tune accordingly. Another thing you can align on the bike once you have the chassis completed. This is actually a pretty cool concept. I've noticed a difference with this in the past but you can align the rear suspension with the motor in the frame. Everything kind of works as a whole. I actually learned this little trick from Trey Kennard's mechanic, Brent Presnell, so shout out to him. But you wanna have your rear shock bolts loose, as well as your linkage bolts, your swing arm pivot, all your engine mounts. So we'll need the bike leaned up against the wall. You're gonna jump on it, compress the suspension a few times, and then let it slowly return to its natural spot. Then we'll start by torquing the swing arm pivot bolt. This is like the very center of the bike where everything pivots and arguably the most important. With the bike off the stand and under its own weight, we will start torquing these bolts. The swing arm pivot on this bike calls for 65 foot pounds. Next up is the linkage bolts. This one is 59 along with the front and the one that connects to the swing arm and the shock mounting bolts are 33 foot pounds for top and bottom. There's something so satisfying about the click of a torque wrench. It's like a uh, click of approval. So now for the engine, the front, bottom and top bolt here are all 40 foot pounds and then the two way up there are both 20. So that's it for torquing but man I am so excited with how this thing is progressing. All right, guys, it is giveaway time. I'll be picking three winners to choose either a shirt or a hat off my website, primemx.com. Got a bunch of different shirt and hat styles over there. Everything's super high quality. This shirt, the same exact shirt, I've been rocking it for like two years straight, seemingly like every day, and it's held up really good. Still rocking it, and the, uh, the hats are really comfortable too. So head over to primemx.com figure out what you want, and then go down below in the description. First link will take you over to the giveaway page. Just enter your info there, no purchase required, and you are entered. And then in a week or a week and a half, I'll go through and pick three lucky winners. So good luck. Now I think we can get some more goodies bolted up onto the CR. Let's go ahead and get this subframe, airbox, and silencer back on the bike. I ended up finding the right mounts for the silencer. Just ordered OEM ones from Rocky Mountain. For the air boot, I like to throw a little bit of SC1 or Windex inside of there. Just helps it slip onto the carburetor a little easier. The nice thing about using Windex is it evaporates pretty quick, unlike SC1, which leaves a little film on there. First thing I always try to line up is the boot onto the carburetor. These can be kind of tough sometimes. Make sure you have that clamp all the way loose before you try to wiggle it on. Once I get the air boot started on the carburetor, I'll pop in the top subframe bolt. 
That gives me a little leverage with the subframe. That way I can hold the air boot into position while I tighten that clamp. As you can imagine, having that boot all the way onto the carburetor and clamped down is pretty important. That'll always be your first source of an air leak and therefore dirt traveling in your engine. So very essential that that thing is tight. Now just throw a little Loctite on those subframe bolts and you'll be golden. Torque spec for the subframe bolts is 20 foot pounds. Now, some of you guys might be confused on what bolts to torque, which ones not to, what bolts to use Loctite on, and so on and so forth. So here's my general rule of thumb. All of the major bolts, such as the engine mounting, suspension, uh, triple clamp, axles, all that stuff needs to be torqued to the factory spec. And then anything below an eight millimeter thread, I typically don't torque. So that would include like gas tank bolts, uh, radiator mounting bolts, air box bolts, and clutch cover bolts. I typically won't torque any of that stuff. I'll just go by feel. Now, as far as which bolts to Loctite, you obviously only want to Loctite bolts that don't have a locking nut on it. So a locking nut looks like that one there on the sprocket. Don't want to Loctite those, not necessary. But on bolts that commonly come loose, like subframe bolts, seat bolts, the Kickstarter bolt and brake pedal bolt, those will definitely need to be Loctited. And then as far as pinch bolts, like the triple clamp and axle lug, those are under attention, so no need to Loctite those. I hope this helps you guys and clears up any confusion when it comes to Loctite and torquing. Well, how about getting the silencer back on? Let's go for it. I have no idea how I forgot about these trick little carbon fiber guards. They go on the fork lug to protect that beautiful Cerakote. So these are from CMT Carbon out of Italy. I'll have a link down below to where you can find them. You wanna run a washer in between the guard and the lug, that way you don't damage that beautiful carbon fiber. You can never have too much carbon. So we've got the carbon tank, carbon master guard, caliper guard, and rotor guard down here, all from CMT. Now, if there's one more thing I wanna do in carbon fiber, that would be the silencer or at least the end cap on this one. So if you guys know of any CR250 carbon silencers or even just the end cap, go ahead and tag me in some Instagram posts. I would love to pick one up for this bike. I think that'd be the cherry on top. I knew I was missing a couple more things. So this piece goes on the joint of the silencer and pipe. And then we've got the gas tank strap. And as you guys saw, we've got a works connection skid plate. So let's get this thing fastened up. You can see the frame already has a dent in the rail from before. So we definitely want to prevent that from happening again. And we also got to protect those fresh cases. So we've got four brackets here, three of which are the same, and then one that has a shorter bracket or shorter angle. This one is gonna go on the right rear of the skid plate. And these screws, you'll definitely want to Loctite. If you don't have Loctite on them, they'll back out pretty quick with all that vibration. Let's get this bracket slipped in the frame, just like that. Now just a matter of getting the rest of these brackets screwed on. Before I get those front brackets in, I'm gonna stuff the foam inside of there. The foam just helps prevent any mud from packing up in the skid plate. And now we just gotta tighten this baby down. Looking pretty good on there. In my opinion, this is one of the better skid plates or as some would call it a glide plate that you can buy for a moto application made of nice thick aluminum and it's not gonna cause a ton of vibration issues. And obviously if you're riding woods, you wanna have some guards that come up and protect the engine a little better. But for moto, this is the ticket. I'll drop a link down below to where I bought this one. But man, with that skid plate, you can definitely see the, uh, the dent in the frame now. So like I was thinking earlier, the forks are looking a little bit bare and I've got something to help fix that. 
some Showa stickers. Hopefully these stick fine to the Cerakote. I know I've had a problem with that in the past. So I'm gonna use some heat and that should help it out. So I like to use isopropyl alcohol before applying graphics to help clean things up. This stuff isn't quite as harsh as acetone on your skin and lungs. That red is definitely a little darker than I'd expected, but I think it looks pretty good on there. So I had to use a ton of heat to get this stuff to stick to the Cerakote, but I think it's on there good now. So lately I've been working really hard to get you guys some good deals on dirt bike parts. And so you're gonna wanna pay attention here. Get your notepad out, your phone, and write these down. All you guys that own a two-stroke, I know you want a billet cylinder head with interchangeable domes. So this one is from Fathead Racing. To save 10% on those, use the code CAM10. And then for the swing arm pivot system, this is a greasable setup. It allows you to grease your swing arm pivot bearings with just a grease gun here. That whole setup you can save 10% on by using the code CAM10 once again. I'll have all the links to these companies as well as those codes down below in the description. Obviously you guys can tell the only thing we're missing at this point is plastics. So why don't we dig into that right now? Now the first thing we've got for plastics is a set of red fork guards here along with some graphics from Rocky Mountain. These are from their graphic company called Attack. I'll have to wipe down the guards with alcohol here to clean them up. Get this graphic lined up here at the bottom. I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun real quick to finish her up. It came out looking pretty good. So let's get these things bolted up. Although I might have to pull that front wheel off. Got this pretty cool fastener kit from Bolt for all the plastics. Let's see if we can find some bolts for the fork guard. Looks like it's these ones right here. It's very important to use the right length of bolts. If you use too long of a bolt, you'll actually dent the tube. It'll thread in too far and the spring inside will get stuck in there. It's a big hassle. One little thing that kind of bugs me about Hondas is these fork guard bolts, how tough they are to get to. But if you've got a cut down Allen wrench like we've got here, ain't a thing. Next thing we've got is this cool little brake line clamp from Zeta, or however you pronounce it. I think we're ready to get some fenders on this bike. You can kind of see the theme and the colors I'm going with. Hey, we're actually starting to see some color on this thing. Looking pretty good. Now for you guys that have stuck around for the video, you're definitely getting your money's worth. And I say that because Works Connection is gonna offer you guys a discount as well. My favorite thing they sell is this Elite Lever and Perch. Makes your clutch pull buttery smooth. I also have their radiator braces, the skid plate we just installed, uh, the master cylinder caps, those always look super trick. So to save 20% on Works Connection parts, use the code CAM20. Heck of a deal. And of course, we've got some side plates with my name and number on them. Got Prime MX on there as well. Excited to see how these fit on the bike. Rocky Mountain really knocked it out of the park with this graphic and color scheme. Let's check it out.
Now for the front plate, I'll be using a Sykra Stadium plate for a 2019 CRF. I prefer these over the OEM plates because you're able to zip tie them to the fork, holds them on a little better, and I think they look better as well. And it's got a built-in brake line guide as well, which is pretty slick. Now as far as mounts go, this plate uses two top mounts, which obviously won't work with the factory center mount. So we'll need a bracket. Now Paul Sport does provide a bracket with the restyle kit, which we have here. But what I found is that bracket makes the number plate sit too high up with this one and even with the plate that they provided. And it looks really cheesy on there as well. You see the big bracket up top here. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. So I had these brackets manufactured out of stainless steel. Just fits right on the front of the triple clamp here. It just bolts onto the factory hole like that. And voila, you got two threaded holes for your new style number plate. Now, before I bolt it up and test it out, figured I might as well see what the Scotch Brite can do to shine it up. Now it is stainless steel, so we don't have to worry about it rusting. So no need to paint it, powder coat it, or Cerakote it. Just leave it bare. Damn, that is fresh. Let's see how it fits on the bike. The bracket's on and the front plate is ready to mount, but let me show you guys something real quick. So for all of you that want to run a newer front plate and front fender, I'll show you how I would go about mounting the new style front fender since you do have to drill a couple holes in it. Now granted, this fender is already pre-drilled for the CR clamps. This one came with the restyle kit. Now, I have a fender here for a 2020 or a 2019 CRF. It uses the newer style mounting holes. So I'll walk you through how you would mount this fender onto the older style clamps. So to start off, you're gonna wanna have your old fender washers on the fender, but installed upside down. So I'm gonna have to flip these around. Now we're gonna take the template. These come with the brackets and line it up with the holes. We're gonna take something like a pencil or a punch and mark through that bigger hole and then get that template centered on the hole and take a fender bolt or a six millimeter bolt and push it through that hole all the way through like that so now the template should be held in place pretty good and then we're going to take a screwdriver a punch something sharp and line it up with the smaller holes and then give it a little tap with a hammer shit Do the same for the other three holes. Now we can take that template off and now you'll be able to see the punch marks we made. Now take a drill and a small drill bit. I have an eighth inch size on this one and drill right through those punch marks we just made. Now we're gonna swap out that eighth inch drill bit for a three eighths. Now the rears are gonna be kind of tricky because they're so close to those existing holes. So basically you're just gonna be slotting the hole there. And then just pop in your fender washers. These washers will kind of hold everything in place with those slotted holes. And now the fender is ready to go on the bike. These existing holes from before are gonna be hidden by the number plate, by the way. Now this template's kind of a temporary idea. I am planning on building a jig that bolts to these holes here. That way you can just punch through, get the holes you need, and I think that'd make it a lot easier. It's a bummer, there's not a cleaner way of mounting this. Honestly, I could probably use some bigger washers and help cover up those slotted holes. But I've ran the same setup on my 125 for probably a couple years now. You guys probably never would've guessed I had a hacked up fender on there, but yeah, works great. Never had any issues with it. Now I'll show you guys why we couldn't use the existing holes. See how close the fender is to the triple clamp here where the step is? Yeah, so that's why we had to drill all four new holes for it. Let's go ahead and see how the number plate fits on here. I think this is gonna look pretty good. Spot on. Now the reason for the tubing over the zip tie is so the zip tie doesn't wear into the coating on the fork. It actually happened on my 125. 
So I thought I'd be a little proactive this time on the 250. So that is it for the front end. Everything's mounted nice and solid, just like OEM. And one thing I noticed that's kind of weird with this fender compared to the other one, this one actually looks like natural on there. The other one, the restyle fender, pointed it higher up and looked kind of funky. So pretty glad I mounted this one instead. Now for you guys that want to restyle your front end just like I did here, I do sell the bracket that we installed. So you get the bolts, the template, and of course the bracket itself, all available over on my website, primemx.com. So this bracket is for 2000 to 2003 CR125, CR250, and CRF450. And if you have an 04 or newer, I have a different variation of the bracket. They use a little different mounting holes. So this bracket is for 04 to 07, and it comes with the bolts, the template, both of them all ready to go. So I'll drop a link to these brackets down below in the description. Just for reference, this is what the 04 to 07 bracket looks like on the bike. This is on my 125. Just mount up your number plate and you are set. All right, fellas, this is the moment we've all been waiting for to finally finish up the bike. And of course, the last thing is the seat. You know what guys, I thought I was done, but the mailman just showed up. So let's see what we got here. Looks like some coolant, some oil, and what is this? Got a brake pedal. Dude, that is really gonna finish her off nicely. Let's bolt her up. Pretty pumped on how that pedal looks on there. So it's got a folding tip, pretty nice. And then this is called a brake snake. So say if your pedal catches a rut or a root or whatever, this wire will prevent that pedal from folding out and making the pedal unusable. So these come with the crimps loose. So once you get the wire hooked up on the motor mount, pull that thing tight. You want a little bit of slack there, that way you can still use the pedal and then crimp those connections there. So officially the 250 is finally done. Feels so good. So let's pull this thing out in the sun, get some shots and let it rip. So this bike will forever be something truly special to me. I don't know if I could ever get rid of it. So as many of you know, I started this build in December of 2017, paid $400 for a beat up 2003 CR250, and shortly thereafter tore it apart, started uh, making some good progress on it. And then in July of 2018, I just about had the engine built. Um, the bike was coming along really good and I started feeling really, really sick. And so I went into the doctor's office and was told I had an aggressive form of leukemia. And that was just a complete heartbreak to me. Obviously this bike was put on the back burner, but when I was feeling good enough, I was still able to get out in the shop and turn some wrenches on it. Actually made quite a bit of progress 
and finish it up while going through cancer treatment. So to be able to build a bike while going through cancer was something I never thought I'd have to face, but we did it guys, me and all of you. We built a really badass bike while going through some serious hurdles in life. And I just wanna say thank you to every single one of you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me, knowing that this thing was eventually gonna get done and all I can say is we did it. We beat cancer, we built the bike, and we had a ton of fun along the way. So back to the bike for a second. Here are my thoughts on the Paula Sport Restyle Kit. So overall, I think it looks awesome. It really modernizes the bike, and for the most part, it actually fits pretty good. There's some things I do really like about it. The rear fender looks amazing. It lines up with everything underneath really well, really tucks in that subframe. The side plates look amazing as well really recreates that newer CRF style. Now for the shrouds, I do think they look pretty good for the most part. The only thing that I would change is I would trim this little piece off right here. I don't know, it just looks kind of out of place right there. Take a step back and show you guys that little piece right there, I think we could do without and it would look a little better. Now for the front plate and front fender, the front fender I got looked kind of dorky on there, like I was saying earlier. It pointed up a little higher, and the front plate wasn't a big fan of the standard or the OEM style front plate, so I switched to a Sykra stadium plate. And one thing I've noticed on all CR250s that have this kit on it, the rear shock adjuster doesn't line up very well. It should be centered in the hole. But when I put this kit on my 125, the shock lined up fine. So. Kind of weird with the 250s. And also one more thing with 125 is the silencer is a lot shorter. And I think this kit looks quite a bit better on the 125 versus the 250. You can see how far that silencer pokes out. Not really a fan of it. There are some workarounds with that. I'm not quite sure what I'll do with it. I was kind of thinking of trimming this silencer down like a 125 pipe, but then I think it wouldn't work very well on a 250. So what I'm kind of thinking of doing is getting another one of these silencers, mounting it up on the other side with the side plate style, there's room for silencers on either side. So basically doing dual shorties on the back of this bike. I think it would look pretty cool, but for the most part, really digging the kit. At first, when I put it on, I was kind of hemming and hawing about it but kind of like the suspension, the more I looked at it, the more I fell in love with it. And after a few changes with a different front fender, different front number plate, I actually think it looks amazing on there. Really, really loving it now. And I have to give a big thank you to Rocky Mountain for supplying the restyle kit, as well as doing the graphics up on this bike. So they actually have a graphic company, it's called Attack Graphics. They went through, completely built this graphic kit to my liking. And so big, big thank you to them. All right, so now that the 250 is done, a lot of you are gonna be wondering what's next. So I do have some ideas on what I'm gonna build next. I'll be picking up a bike within the next couple weeks. Little hint, it will be another two stroke. So really excited about that. So as far as future videos with the 250, I will be doing a video on breaking it in, doing some riding with it as soon as I'm cleared to ride. Hopefully that'll be this fall. But yeah, lots of exciting things coming on the channel. So. Hang in there. Once again, thank you so much for watching the videos and supporting. I appreciate it more than you know. Till next time, keep her prime.